We'd like to let welcome everyone to the White Rock Baptist Church broadcast uh, during this time of the coronavirus that we're uh, doing our taping here at the church and then posting them on our website and other forms of media, including Facebook and YouTube. And uh, we're just thankful that we've got those opportunities to still get the word out and extend it out there to all that uh, can get it. And <clears throat> We'd also like to say this evening that uh, uh, even if you're not a member of our church, we hope that uh, if you can get this and do get it, that it'll be a blessing unto you. And we're going to be con con continuing uh, our Easter message series, and we will be doing that uh, all the way up till the time of Easter. We had hoped that maybe we might be able to be meet here at the church for Easter, but now that is certainly looking uncertain. Uh, it is April the 1st, uh, 2020. It's in the afternoon here at the church, and we are certainly uh, thankful for this opportunity and want to welcome everyone that can tune into it by whatever means. We've got a really good feedback on stuff we've put out so far. We've got much more traffic than we normally have, and of course, this is our only means of getting out there. Uh, we may look into some actual filming and go a step beyond the audio uh, as we draw closer to Easter. We're discussing that right now and looking at it, and uh, we'll determine that and see where we go. I'd like for you to bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we come before your holy throne here this evening, Father, we are thankful for the gift of life and for the hope of life everlasting through by the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, we're thankful for your goodness to us, and we accept that by faith. Father, uh, believing that we can come boldly through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and have confidence uh, in that, that we're accepted in the beloved. And Father, we come before you this evening and want to cast our cares upon you. And Father, we know we've got great needs in our world right now, things that are far beyond us in our nation, in our state, Father, in our local communities, uh, Father, and in our families. And Lord, we know there's a lot of physical needs out there right now, especially those people that have uh, contracted this virus and that are fighting some for life itself and many that are mourning over the loss of life. God, we ask you be with them and be with those other needs and cares that our people have. Lord, we want to thank you for uh, being with Libby West and touching her that she's showing improvement and ask you to watch over Wanda Faust. Lord, we just got an Eric Cope. We've got a lot of needs out in front of us right now and we ask you to bless and touch them. Take care of our people as they're at home. Uh, Father, I just pray that we can keep communications going with them and that uh, they'll know that they can get in touch with us at any time they need to and we'll try to uh, come to them or help them in whatever way we can. And God, this evening, we stand in need of your touch. Uh, Father, we, we realize that we are very small, we're very limited, that we can do nothing without you. We believe we can do all things through you. And we pray that our Savior will be magnified here this evening. Father, we pray that you will be worshipped through your word. The Holy Spirit will be the Lord of this service here. And Father, also we ask that you would grant us wisdom from above and strength. Make us strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And Lord, our people are, are struggling right now. They've got a lot of things uh, out in front of them, many things that we don't understand. I know, Father, there's fear in the communities and all over the land, all over the world. And Father, I just pray that you will strengthen each one of them and that they'll be encouraged. And Lord, that you give us that manna from heaven that we can be strengthened and fed and that we can look to yet a glorious eternal future. Thank, thank you, God, for our destiny. Thank you for a wonderful Savior. Bless this service in Jesus' name. We do ask it all. And amen. We started our message on the Easter series and uh, we were looking at uh, God's eternal plans and, and we realized that God is in full control. Even in times during the storm and in times like these that the Bible says that the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. Uh, 
It's always strengthened me to know that God is not reactionary, that he's not developing a plan. He already has a plan, and he's been carrying it out from before he ever created man. Uh, he had already set forth a Savior for man because our God is almighty. He is all-seeing, all-present, all-powerful, all-knowing, and he knew the end from the very beginning. And so he had already planned for a Savior for fallen man. And coming into this Easter season, I can't think of a better time for us to embrace the hope of Easter uh, for man's needs than right now and especially during a time of trial and tribulation. And uh, we looked the last time that we preached that uh, many and we said time would not allot be allotted to us nor would allow us to try to touch every reference in the Bible to uh, God's plan to provide a Savior and uh, to meet our needs and not only that but to plan, to plan a future and another time in another place under better circumstances. And we looked at those that had got a glimpse of that and last week we looked at Job and he said, I know that my Redeemer lives this I shall see him for myself. We looked at Daniel, and Daniel said that there would come a time that, that the uh, stone that was cut without hands, that was going to set up a kingdom forever, that was none other than the Messiah, that was none other than the Savior, than the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said he would be cut off, uh, beloved, and that when he was cut off, there would be yet one remaining week of prophecy before he would return and come again. And we looked at, Ma at Matthew, uh, beloved, uh, giving, revealing the prophecy of, of God sending His Son and Him being born into this world. And I'd like to start this evening. Uh, we got down to St. Luke and we're going to turn there in Luke chapter 2, if you will. Most of the time we're there for a Christmas story. But this is a part of the plan and part of the men of God down through the ages that saw uh, God's prophecies and His provisions uh, being fulfilled and met in order to meet our needs. And really and truly, beloved, I know that Easter can be a kind of an excruciating time when we visit the cross, but it is an extremely necessary time. For had that not have taken place, we indeed would be without hope, without God, and without help tonight. And we're thankful that we are not without any of those things, but that we have a living Savior. And thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. And we're thankful for that. I want to look at Luke's vision, and then I want to go into to some of the Messianic Psalms and uh, we'll try to comment on that a little bit more as we get uh, closer to that this evening. Uh, but I want you to look right here for a few moments of time this evening and look with me in St. Luke uh, chapter 2 and we're going to read some. This is very familiar uh, territory to most believers and uh, having said that I hope beloved that uh, if you've never made your eternal plans uh, that this would be a time that you would consider your eternal destiny. Everybody's going to spend forever somewhere and we hope that your destiny will be in heaven above and uh, we are certainly thankful uh, like the apostle Paul we are not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and the Greek also God has sent good news that you don't have to uh, face destruction and judgment but that you can go free and live with him forever and we hope you would embrace that I want you to look because St. Luke uh, uh, many refer to him as Dr. Luke and indeed he was uh, he also saw uh, this coming Savior and, uh, and he wrote in his gospel about him as he was uh, coming into the world and beginning his journey to prepare to go to Mount Calvary but in Luke chapter 2 down in verse 1 uh, it says and, and actually let me drop down to verse 7 uh, for time's sake and it says and she brought forth her firstborn son speaking of Mary the mother of Jesus and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn and they were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and lo the angel of the Lord 
Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. What a sight that must have been uh, for these lowly shepherds on a dark, uh, cold night to be out keeping their flocks, and all of a sudden they get a heavenly visit. How precious that is, because uh, this period right before this is known of the 400 years of silence between the Old Testament and the New Testament that nobody had heard from God in that period of time. And it started in the temple with Zacharias uh, when an angel told him that uh, his wife Elizabeth was going to bring forth a child uh, that his name would be called John and he would be the forerunner, the one that would introduce the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Mary was told about this uh, virgin miraculous birth and she had the encounter and and then beloved these shepherds that then Joseph was told and these shepherds at the time of birth and they're out in the field on what seems to be a normal night but uh, suddenly beloved uh, there was an angel that came and appeared to them and I can imagine that they were indeed startled that they were uh, skeptical they were afraid they were wondering what was going on uh, but this was not a bla- bad uh, a presentation but it was a wonderful glorious presentation and it says and and verse 10 and the angel said unto them fear not for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people uh, one of the greatest announcements that's ever been made a heavenly host come to earth uh, to tell that God was sending good news to the earth and it wasn't just for these angels it wasn't just for Israel it wasn't just for the Jews but it would be good news for all people all over the world uh, everybody would find this and indeed we hope beloved that this evening and when when you get this message that you'll find it to be uh, good tidings of great joy and the good tidings are beloved is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and the good tidings beloved is God's got a plan uh, Dr. Luke saw it and he was revealing it in the gospel uh, that we stood in great need for all sin and come short of the glory of God And we must face, beloved God, ourselves. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. But there was good news declared that night that God had a provision. Uh, He had, beloved, a plan for for humanity. And that plan would not be one of sorrow, but it would be one of great joy that He intended, beloved, and had just brought forth uh, the Savior of the world. He is a babe in a manger, but He is going to grow up and make His path beloved towards Mount Calvary he will fulfill all the demands that were placed upon the first Adam except instead of failing uh, he will satisfy the law to every jot and tittle and God will declare himself uh, that this is my son in whom I'm well pleased at his baptism and at the Mount of Transfiguration after he had been tried as an adult man and found suitable and worthy uh, to be the sin bearer the Lamb of God that takes Take away the sin of the world. And thank God it was a great tidings of great joy good tidings from God thank God that he loves us thank God that he's still loving us thank God if you're lost this evening and you get this message God beloved has a message of great tidings and great joy that you don't have to face judgment but you can be set free and my what an announcement that was made to those and then he goes on to say for unto you is born this day in the city of David Bethlehem, the city of David, the city of the king. Uh, He would be in the lineage and have the heritage of King David uh, because God had prophesied. God's got a plan this evening, beloved. I know we're in a difficult time. I know none of us know for sure where we're going. Day by day, the circumstances change. I know it can look fearful when you look out there, but God's got a plan. He prophesied earlier that he would send forth a king uh, that would sit upon the throne of his father. Father David and he would set up a kingdom that would last forever and ever and ever. He would be the savior of the world. The good news beloved was that God has a plan to fix all that is wrong in the world that you and I live in tonight. Praise God for that precious plan for unto you is born this day in the city of David. A savior thank God almighty if 
God ever allows you to see that you've come short of the glory of God and that you're a sinner which qualifies you for eternal judgment beloved you will be extremely thankful to know that there's a remedy for sin there's a remedy for judgment that God has provided a savior beloved and he goes on to say which is Christ the Lord and the Lord Jesus Christ born in a manger is bound for Mount Calvary he's on a mission beloved God the Father has sent him to be the sacrifice to substitute to take away the sin of the world and he alone would be qualified to do that praise God that as we come upon this Easter beloved and we come through this season we're seeing beloved the revelation of God carrying out his plan you and I have the privilege of looking in hindsight we started back in the Old Testament where a lot of this was future prophecy but now we're looking back beloved uh, in the past where it was accomplished and it was done and you and I have the privilege of seeing it accomplished but let me tell you something this evening there is still a day and an hour uh, beloved that God has a lot yet to do I don't know this evening uh, but what we're seeing uh, some of the birth pains uh, beloved of the time of Jacob's trouble and of great tribulation I I don't know where exactly we're going uh, but beloved I want to tell you something God has a plan and he's fulfilling it and he beloved says that in the moment of time the twinkling of an eye uh, God beloved is going with the shout and the voice of the archangel call his church his precious blood those that have been redeemed saved washed in the blood of the lamb uh, those that by faith have claimed him to be theirs and you can do that this evening and he's going to call us out before he pours the wrath of God upon this earth God's got a plan and beloved if you're saved tonight you are headed to the kingdom of heaven forever and ever and ever thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift unto us is born a savior in the city of David which is Christ the Lord and this shall be a sign unto you you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God my what a scene that must have been I'll tell you the heavenly host was excited about God's plan they was excited about a future kingdom that this little babe was going to set up they was so excited about his mission did you know they wanted to carry the, the message of that mission the Bible says the angels desired to look in this and God beloved would not allow them to do it Uh, they are not kinsmen they are not human beings they are the angelic host but you and I beloved are a precious commodity to God we are bought with a price worst in the precious blood of the lamb and suddenly there was with the angel multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill to men yes Dr. Luke got to see uh, beloved some of God's plan he got to see uh, the son of God that was the eternal deity uh, God the creator from times past uh, take on a body of flesh and he got to see uh, that God had introduced him in a body of flesh uh, to be able to fulfill the second Adam's role and go to Mount Calvary and meet the need of all humanity and beloved Calvary uh, was a place where that he would pay the price for sin but on Easter Sunday morning is the place where victory was declared. He had satisfied the demand of God. God saw the travail of his soul and he said I'm satisfied with that and because of that you and I could go free because of that the angels could declare glory to God in the highest. God deserves the praise and the worship for what he's done and because of that there will one day be peace upon the earth and goodwill towards men. Thank God for that we're in a troubled world we're in a trying time but almighty God's on the throne this evening and he's got a plan that he's executing and as we come into this Easter beloved let us cherish these precious things that he's allowed us to see and he's allowed us to be a part of and beloved let us look yet to the future to the things that he's going to allow us to be a part of now I'm going to go back a little bit to Psalms chapter uh, 22 
If you want, want to turn there with me uh, quickly, and I want to look at a few of these Messianic Psalms, I want to read a little bit. I'm preaching out of the uh, Schofield Bible, and his footnotes are real good right here. And I wanted to read a little bit of them before we look at these Messianic Psalms. Messianic Psalms are prophecies of a Messiah, a King, a Savior, and a Redeemer. And they are the prophecies of God's answers for man's needs. He's actually the King of kings and Lord of all lords. He is my Redeemer. He's my Savior. He's the Messiah to Israel. And He'll be the King of the universe. And He is the answer for my and your eternal needs. And if you know that, you can worship Him and praise God. If you don't know that, you can. You're still drawing bare. You can be saved for it's everlasting too late. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now I want to read to you just a little bit. Psalms 22, 23, and 24 a form a trilogy. In Psalms 22, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Uh, that's in reference to John chapter 10, the good shepherd. In Psalms 23, the great shepherd brought again from the dead through the blood of the everlasting covenant. That's, that's relevant to Hebrews 13.20. And then finally, uh, tenderly cares for the sheep. In Psalms 24, the chief shepherd appears as king of glory to own and reward his sheep. And that's in uh, relationship to 1 Peter 5, 4. Now Psalms 22 uh, gives that, and you'll see that very quickly after I get into that. And one of the reasons I wanted to go to those messianic psalms and trace those messianic psalms uh, down through the channels of time, you realize that these men were writing in great detail about, beloved, the coming sacrifice, about God Himself showing, giving them a sign. You see, beloved, what was in that body of flesh was a sign to Israel. It was the Lord Himself in that body headed to Mount Calvary. And they're giving great detail about God's plan that's going to meet their needs yet out in the future. And and reason I'm saying that is, beloved, that great detail is not any information that they possessed of the himself these were prophecies and they were divinely appointed prophecies the things that they're talking about some of them had not even come into existence yet uh, they were, these were written hundreds of years hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years uh, before they actually came to pass uh, but I want to start with some of them right here tonight and I wanted to come down through these messianic psalms and and I've often thought the Lord loved to go even as a child at 12 years old he went to the temple and 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 the the, the men of the temple the priests were amazed at, at his knowledge and his maturity and he went there beloved on the feast days and, and he observed the things that were going on he went again and he drove the merchants from the temple made a cord and whipped them because of what they were doing they were defying the law and the instruction of Moses and the priest uh, but I've often wondered uh, he was prophesied as he he looked through you see they had those Old Testament scrolls and as he looked through those and he read those things like these messianic psalms and Isaiah 53 and these passages that we've been reviewing he knew that that was talking about him that he'd come to do the will of the Father, uh, Father all the way through uh, beloved the, the uh, gospel stories and accounts it says and this was done to fulfill the prophecy which said it would be done over and over and over again we read that but I want to pick up in Psalms 22 right here in a very solemn place uh, because it immediately takes us a messianic Psalms my what a picture the king the Messiah of Israel has seen suffering and seen beloved in, in great uh, suffering and sorrow here uh, their king uh, would be sacrificed he would be slain Israel had a hard time with that but I'll tell you before he could be king of kings and lord of lords of the whole world hey, he had beloved uh, to face the hour and the time uh, that God would pour his wrath out upon him for the sin of the world and picking up in Psalms chapter 22 and I want to look right there and I actually want to read a little bit more Psalms 22 is a graphic picture of death by crucifixion 
the bones of the hands, arms, shoulders, and pelvis out of joint in verse 14. The profuse perspiration caused by intense suffering, verse 14. The action of the heart affected, uh, strength exhausted and extreme thirst. The hands and feet pierced, partial nudity with the hurt to the modesty. All are incidental to that mode of death. The accompanying circumstances are precisely those fulfilled in the crucifixion in Christ. The desolate cry verse 1 uh, beloved in Matthew 27 46 the periods of light and darkness of verse 2 in Matthew 27 45 the, the contumely of verses 6 through 8 12 and 13 uh, beloved uh, the casting of lots of verses 18 all were literally fulfilled when it's remembered that crucifixion was a Roman not a Jewish form of execution and the proof of inspiration is irresistible and and so we want to delve into that a little bit. Can you imagine uh, some, some person of the Old Testament, uh, probably King David right here, as he was recording this Psalms, and he is writing about a horrible death, a time of sorrow, and a great outcry of suffering. And he is telling about his form of death, and it's, it's beloved, is something that a kingdom hundreds and hundreds of years later would carry out, but not the Jews, the Jews form of capital punishment was stoning it was not crucifixion, King David and none of those Old Testament people knew anything about a Roman Empire, none of them knew anything about crucifixion but God the Holy Spirit that knew the end from the beginning he's got a plan tonight he knew every detail and everything and he was revealing that uh, hundreds of years before it would ever come to pass and he would tell of how his son would die on a rugged cross at Mount Calvary and that he would suffer the death for the sins of the world and he revealed that Now I want to pick up the dialogue and read some right there but I want you to think about this just for a moment as we dig into that I want you to think as we're headed to Mount Calvary and the crucifixion and the resurrection for Easter Sunday in 2020 beloved every step of the way from before the foundation of the world God has a plan in the fullness of time God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law that he might redeem them which were under the law and beloved tonight wherever you sit the air that you're drawing into your lungs the, your heart that's beating blood through your system your mind beloved that's contemplating the world around you God has you right in his hands he has control of you he's got the whole world in his hands he's got me and you brother I want to tell you something for those that's redeemed you are bought with a price. He is able to finish the work he started. He's going to get you home safe regardless of what's happening. The things that are happening now, beloved, are not the things of man. They are the plan of God. And me and you are walking through Bible times right now, bound for glory, headed to the kingdom of heaven that's going to last forever and ever and ever. Amen right there, Buncey. Buncey's the only congregant I've got in here tonight. She's agreeing for everything I say. Amen. So I want to pick it up. You'll remember it if as you record, re remember the uh, uh, account in the Gospels of the crucifixion, but it starts off immediately. My God! My God! This is the Son of God speaking to God the Father. Why hast thou forsaken me? He was a perfect son. Perfect in all ways. God had just told him on the Mount of Configuration that this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And now hanging upon that cruel tree he's crying out, Father, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He's crying the cry, a beloved of the sinner that's bound in judgment, uh, asking for mercy, but being God forsaken, he is crying the cry of substitution. Right there, he's taking your place. Uh, he's standing in your position. He's standing there for you. And he has become God forsaken, wearing a crown of thorns, the crown of the curse of those that's bound for judgment, that he he could die for you and give you everlasting life. I would tell you to flee the wrath of God to come. And so he's crying out the exact words that he said upon the cross. Elama, Elama, Sabachathani, my which is being interpreted 
My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring, the God of this world, Satan, all the fallen demons, and all that had given allegiance to God of this world, the powers of the kingdom of the earth of Rome, and the, and the religious parties of Israel had come together in agreement, and they were happy at this scene. They wanted to crucify him. They wanted to do away with him. They thought they would get rid of him. Satan thought, this is one more chance that I may stop this kingdom from coming and thwart my own judgment. And when the Son of God was crying out, God forsaken us. Uh, the dark world, I uh, beloved, thought it might have a little bit of hope right there. But I want to tell you, beloved, he did that intentionally. He said, no man uh, takes my life from me. I've got the power to lay it down, and I've got the power to take it up again. And indeed he did, beloved. And so I want to read on, and I want you to listen. We're in the Old Testament in Psalms. We're reading about Mount Calvary and about the Son of God dying for the sins of the world. We're going into Easter 2020. I believe it. I want to tell you this evening, God's got a plan. He's got a plan for this world. He's got a plan for you and me. And believe it, we're right in the middle of it. I hope you're saved tonight. If I wasn't saved right now with the things that's going on in this world, I'd find me a place and I'd become the sinner and I'd ask Jesus to be my Savior and He will. He can save you this very evening if you call upon his name and he says oh my God in verse 2 I cry in the daytime but thou hearest not and in the night season and I'm not silent but thou art holy O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel our fathers trusted in thee they trusted and thou didst deliver them they cried unto thee and were delivered. And they trusted in thee and were not confounded. Now I want you to listen to his position right here. It's a pitiful position. This is our Lord speaking to God the Father. And here he has surrendered himself to judgment and to death, even the death of the cross. Here he has become the substitute. And he that knew no sin became sin. Here he is there in our place. And it's a place, beloved, of humility. It's a place of weakness. It's a place of suffering. It's a place where he cannot change the circumstances and he cannot deliver himself. I want to tell you as we read through this tonight, beloved, if you never get saved by the grace of God, if you never get washed in his precious blood this is a picture of your future one day you'll lift your eyes in hell and you will be God forsaken and God will not hear you and there'll be none to deliver you and you'll be there and he said in in verse 6 he said but I am a worm and you know what a worm is? It is a helpless creature. It doesn't have arms and legs that it could run off from you and defend itself. It is a helpless creature. It is in the power and the control of the one that holds it. And he said here on this cross becoming a substitute for sin I am, I am weakened I am, am forsaken I, God has turned his back upon me and I have no power to change the destiny of what I've started here. I I'm but a worm and no man. I'm a reproach of man. They have beaten me, beloved, to a pulp. I am a sight to look upon. I'm despised of people. And he says, all that see me, life me to scorn. Uh, they shoot out their lip and they shake their head saying, he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. He's being mocked. He's being scorned. And not only that, beloved, but he was stripped. He was shamed. He was placed out in the presence of man. Let me tell you once again, that's a picture if you fail to get, get saved by the grace of God, that's a picture of your day judgment. You will be stripped and you'll be found naked without a garment of righteousness and beloved everything that the wrath of God will pour out upon the lost in the lake of fire will come to you. You'll be but a worm. You can cry to God all you want but you will be forsaken because God's judgment has has been placed upon you. And so it was with the Son of God, with the Lord Jesus Christ, as He is on Mount Calvary, uh, the first, very first Easter. 
He says in verse 9, But thou art he that took me out of the womb, that didst make me hope. When I was upon my mother's breast, I was cast upon thee, speaking to the Father uh, from the womb. Remember the Holy Spirit uh, moved upon Mary and placed him in the belly of the little virgin girl. He says, Be not far from me, for trouble is near. For there's nobody to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan's demons from right out of the pits of hell have beset me around. The Bible says that hell, the place of judgment, the lake of fire, is a place where there will be crying and screaming and gnashing and gnawing and that people will literally gape one upon the other. But the demons are there and and the satanic host that was cast in to the lake of fire and Satan himself are present there, beloved. And there will be gaping upon those I want to tell you yeah, don't you go to hell don't you go to hell not with me preaching good tidings of great joy from God don't you go to hell knowing that God has got a plan that he's got a provision he's provided a savior you don't have to face that because Jesus took your place and he faced it for you let this Easter in a time of trouble and, and tribulation be the greatest Easter of your life let it be the time that you may Meet the Savior and plan for eternity to go to heaven to be with Him. Amen. And He says in verse 13, what I'm just saying, they gaped upon me with their mouths as ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. That's the position of the person that was being crucified that was upon the cross. My heart is like wax. It melted in the midst of my bowels. My, what a, what a sight and a scene of suffering. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For the dogs, he's speaking of the Gentiles there, have compassed me, they've surrounded him. The assembly of the lick wicked have enclosed me. Listen to this, beloved. You listen to this. God's handprint, his fingerprint is all over this. If you ever heard God teaching, a beloved, hundreds of years, before this scene he's telling of a type of execution that does not belong to the Jews I'm sure that was a mystery to them and they didn't have a clue but he says this he says beloved in in, uh, uh, verse 16 for dogs have compassed me the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me they pierced my hands and my feet for those that have read the story many times over in the New Testament uh, before they stood that cross up they nailed his hands to the sideboards and they nailed his feet to the cross and then they lifted it up and plunged it into the earth and there he hung between heaven and earth as though he were not good enough for either one and there he died the death of the cross and there he died in judgment for sin not his sin but for my sin and your sin if you will claim it and they pierced his hands totally unknown to the Jews but the way of crucifixion for the Romans and indeed beloved when he comes back Israel's going to recognize those nail scarred hands and feet and I want to tell you this evening beloved listen if you go to hell after God's plan has provided a savior for you you will think about those nail scarred hands and pierced feet throughout all time and eternity if you lift your eyes up in the lake of fire and the demons are gaping upon you and you're deserted and God forsaken and you're in the torment and the fires of hell you'll think about this God's son his only begotten son uh, went to the old rugged cross that he would die in your stead and give you hope of life and life everlasting my what a passage of scripture and how powerful that it is he said I may tell by the way the only thing that man ever did upon this earth that was taken to heaven was those nail scars in his hands and feet And he's coming. Those are memorials to him. And he's coming back. And he's going to reveal them. He said, those are the wounds that I received in in the house of my friends. Another message for another time. But he says, beloved, I may tell all my bones. They look and stare on me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vestures. Be not thou far from me, O Lord, my strength. Haste thee to help me. 
My, what a pitiful scene. What a pitiful scene Mount Calvary is. As we come upon this Easter, it's in celebration of a God that loved us so much that he became became the God-man, the mediator, the go-between, the days man, the one person that could stand between us and God and the one person that could answer humanity's need, the one person that personally could answer for my and your need. Now, I'll tell you, it is personal. You can't get saved collectively. You'll have to take your place and go to Mount Calvary and call upon the only name that was given under heaven whereby we might be saved. I hope as we've looked at this Messianic Psalms here this evening and that we've spent a little time there. I hope that's been a blessing to you. And if you're saved, I hope you'll rejoice that Easter's coming. We celebrate, beloved, a God that loved us so much that He died for us. Not only did He die for us, but on Easter Sunday morning they said, He's not here. He's risen. The tomb is empty. I believe it. He not only died for us, but He lives for us. That He could give us life and life everlasting. And we are certainly thankful for that this evening. And we hope that's been a blessing to you. And if you're not saved, oh beloved, uh, this is God's message to humanity. Uh, he's not singled you out. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. But you've got the same needs I do and everybody else. And I hope that this will be a time. Oh folks, I feel like our time's running out. The Bible says that night is coming and darkness when no man can see to work. That's the reason we're still trying to get these messages out here. We know we're running short of time. We know we're getting ready to leave. You know, we know that God is shaking this whole world that you and I are living in right now. And I would bid you, I would beg you uh, to get saved while there's time. Flee the wrath of God to come. Flee to Mount Calvary. If you'll be the sinner and you are, he'll be the Savior and he is. May God bless you tonight. I hope that's been a blessing to you. We're going to go on and look at several more of these messianic psalms uh, before we get uh, uh, right down to Easter and we finish this series but you be much in prayer for us until we get to meet again. Father in heaven thank you for blessing us tonight oh Lord thank you for the power and the presence of the Holy thank you for exalting your son in our midst for lifting him up Lord you said if he be lifted up he'd draw all men to him. Father I pray that uh, people will get saved from listening to this. I pray that they they'll receive your glorious truth and that they'll find it to be glad tidings of great joy that they'll find it to be the glorious news from heaven the answer that they need for today thank you Lord for being our Savior and may God the Holy Spirit take this and may he take it to the house and the home that it needs to go to to the very heart of the person old and young bless it use it for your glory thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift in Jesus name we do ask it all and amen.